you know, Paul the Apostle was really smart. Um, even even secular people, even unbelievers, a lot of them will admit that Paul was a genius. And um, what I love about Paul is that he, he's able to talk about things in a certain context, in his own context, 2,000 years ago. And they, the words that he puts on the page, they obviously apply to, most directly to his context, but they almost transcend that. And, you know, of course, the Holy Spirit is behind that. The Holy Spirit inspired Paul to write what he did, but we need to give credit where credit is due. His words have great applicability even 2,000 years later. And in Galatians, uh, we see when Paul says that there is no Jew, there is no Greek, there is no male, there is no female, there is no free, there is no slave, we're all one in Christ Jesus. Um, those words have such applicability to today. Um, and so I think that, you know, we, we have to understand that Paul didn't wasn't saying that in order to sort of deny all distinctions. Obviously, there's a distinction between me and you. There's a distinction between male and female. He wasn't denying gender distinctions. He wasn't uh, trying to say that there wasn't actually people running around that were ethnically Jewish and ethnically Greek. Those are all true, but our, our fundamental identity as a church, our foundation as a church, as believers, is in our unity in Christ. When we come to the table, um, the communion table, we're one in Christ. We have the very same uh, footing, and our identity, our union, and our, is so fundamentally in Christ. We're, we're different members, but we're in the same body. And so those other distinctions, male, female, free, or slave, um, you know, Greek or Jew, those don't really matter when it comes to our fundamental unity. There's still distinctions, and there's obviously differences between my DNA and your DNA, um, but foundationally for a Christian, we're one body, right? We're one race, and so that's very important to understand, at least in the church. But <laughs> you wouldn't know that the church in 2018 remembers that or even considers that with stuff like this. This is from the Gospel Coalition Women's Conference page. And here is a special gathering. WOC, Women of Color, Legacy Disciple. I don't know what that is. But anyway, they invite all women of color to a special evening of fun and fellowship on Friday at 9.30. We will engage with a few of the uh, GCW speakers and also enjoy discussion with one another. Light refreshments will be served. The Gospel Coalition at the upcoming Women's Conference will be engaging in segregation. You might think, hey, that's a little extreme, isn't it, Adam? Well, this is the very definition of segregation. If you're saying that white people aren't allowed in this place, we're going to have a fellowship, but not with white people. We're going to have a lot of fun, but not with white people. We're going to have refreshments, but not with white people. Um, that's the definition of segregation. You're segregating the group. Um, for some reason, I don't know what it is, but just the very presence of of someone with the wrong melanin count um, is going to disrupt whatever it is you plan to do. Now, I would never attend an event like that. Obviously, I'm not a woman, first of all. But second of all, uh, I would never, even if it was for men, I would never attend an event like that because it sounds really bad. It sounds like it wouldn't be fun. It sounds like it'd be a probably a gripe session more than anything. I can't think of another reason that whites wouldn't be allowed other than they want to be able to gripe without anyone opposing them. That, that's what it sounds like to me. But I don't know that they're going to do that. I, I'm, I can't see into the future. Um, but I cannot think of a single Christian legitimate reason to have a situation where we want to have a lot of fun and fellowship and refreshments, but no whites. Um, Paul the Apostle would not have stood for something like that. That is, again, that is out of step with the gospel, okay? Like we, we did in the Matt Chandler video yesterday. That's out of step with the gospel. That should be called out for what it is. That's segregation. That's partiality. Um, that's evil. What the Gospel Coalition Women's Conference is doing with that specific event is evil, and it needs to be called out. Uh, here's another example. Here is Kyle J. Howard. He is a biblical counselor who focuses on racial trauma, whatever that means. And here's what he says. He says, people of color who are in the field of biblical counseling who have not been assimilated into majority culture need to start their own counseling and accreditation organizations. Here, a brother is asking for segregated biblical counseling organizations and segregated uh, accreditation organizations because for whatever reason, I don't know, I, if the stain of white people is on any kind of accreditation organization or, or, uh, or uh, counseling organization, that that's not, that's not going to be an effective way to uh, minister with the gospel. Because this is a biblical counselor. This is not a secular counselor. You know, Kyle J. Howard considers himself a biblical counselor. And so he, for some reason, doesn't think that this way of showing partiality is a problem. 
He thinks that this would be okay. This would be acceptable. No, this is out of step with the gospel. Paul would, would confront you about this. Paul would call you out on this, just like he called out Peter. Um, this kind of stuff, this is, this is a real legitimate call for segregation. I actually did a video about this regarding a Christian magazine calling for segregation. And so I'll post that in the, in the, in the, in the, in the description here so you can review why I say this is the literal definition of ethnic and racial segregation. Um, this is not acceptable. This is out of step with the gospel. Those who are biblical, gospel-centered people, those who would agree with Matt Chandler that the Bible uh, does apply, the gospel applies to this issue, you must call out the gospel coalition. You must call out Kyle J. Howard for calling for segregation. It's out of step with the gospel. It's very easy to see that. But for some reason, people are just blind to it. They think that um, as long as it's people of color doing it, people like me, Latinos, or black people, as long as they're doing it, then it's okay for some reason. No, it's partiality. Black people can be partial as well. Latinos can be partial as well. There is no special sin of, of white partiality that's different than the other kinds of partiality. No. No. You know, when you, when you think that, when you take a position that it's okay for people of color to engage in partiality and segregation and stuff like that, um, that actually doesn't help us. That actually hurts us. That actually puts us in danger because it tells us that our sin is okay. Our, our, set, our partiality, our ideas of what racial segregation ought to look like, that's not a sin. And it is a sin. It is a sin. We need to help um, our Latino and black brothers and sisters to see the sinful hearts that they have when they want to engage in segregation like this. Look, I would never go to a uh, no whites allowed event. I just wouldn't do it. I, out of, unless I was going there to rebuke them, of course. But I wouldn't do it because it doesn't sound like fun to me. It doesn't sound like it's in step with the gospel to me. So I would never do it. But, but for people who do want to do it, repent. That is out of step with the gospel. That's what Peter was doing. He wasn't eating with people of another ethnicity. That's what you're doing. How is this event any different? We're, we're going to have fun. We're going to have fellowship and refreshment, but no whites allowed. 